This is a short video about the Chinese remainder theorem. This is in section 2.2 of Stein's book on elementary number theory. So um, where does this problem originate from? Or um, where did this theorem come from? So it is uh, based on a fourth century Chinese mathematician's question. And here's the question. Is there a quantity whose number, or I guess, sorry, there's a quantity whose number is unknown. If you repeatedly divide by three, the remainder is two. Uh, by five and the remainder is three, and then by seven the remainder is two again, we're supposed to figure out what is that quantity. And so we can phrase this question that he asked in terms of a system of linear congruences. Uh, what the question he asked is, I want x to be congruent to two mod three, and uh, that is of course this part right here. Um, and, and simultaneously, I want that same x to be congruent to three mod five, which of course is right here by five, the remainder is three. And then finally, I want x to be congruent to two mod seven, which of course is the last sentence here. And we're supposed to figure out what is the solution to this system. There are some things to notice about this. And the thing that I want you to zoom in on is the moduli, and that's the plural of modulus. And it's a cool word. It ends with two eyes too, that's pretty nifty. Anyway, the uh, moduli here, they're all relatively prime. Whenever they're all relatively prime, I have this fantastic thing called the Chinese remainder theorem, which is what's used to solve the system up here. And so what is the Chinese remainder theorem? If you take any integers a and b, and if you take any natural numbers n and m, such that n and m are relatively prime, so you could guess n and m are going to be the moduli in your system, um, then there exists an x that's an integer such that x is a solution to this system of congruences. In other words, x is congruent to a modulo m, and simultaneously, x is congruent, that same x is congruent to b modulo n. And the other thing we could say, in fact, that x that you found is unique modulo m times n. And maybe the first thing that we'll do is we'll look at the proof for this, because in the proof it kind of outlines how to solve a system of at least two congruences, and uh, so if we look at that, so what am I trying to do? I'm trying to solve this thing here. So what we're gonna try to do is, why don't I specify, I want to find a T that makes this true. That makes what true? Didn't highlight all that I wanted it to. I wanna find a T that makes sure that A plus T times M is congruent to B modulo N. So if I could find a T that makes that true, then when I reduce uh, if I call this side x, well then in that case, this is x, and we're assuming that it's congruent to b mod n, so the second equation is solved. And also, if this is x, maybe I'll highlight it here, when you reduce it mod m, you know, you think about, when you reduce mod m, another way to think about that is multiplying by m is multiplying by zero. So that piece isn't there, and x is congruent to a mod m, right? That's all that's left here. So I'm trying to say that this congruence is also solved at the same time. So really the x that we're after has this form a plus tm. So that'll satisfy both congruences. Now, how do I know I can solve for such a t? So this magical expression will solve both of these things as long as I can find a t uh, so in other words, as long as I'm able to solve for t in this equation here. And remember, you know, it's we've got to follow some rules. It's a little bit tricky. I don't necessarily know um, that I can isolate t here. But uh, in this case, let's see. If I subtract this a from both sides, and that's, I'm just following what we're told to do here. Let's see, what does that say? That says that tm is congruent to b minus a mod n. And maybe if you recall, um, what did proposition 2.13 say? 2.1.13, that told me about what are the solutions to something that looks like um, about capital X times m um, is congruent to something like capital Y mod n. I'm told that just kind of a basic linear congruence, when does it have solutions? It's guaranteed to have solutions as long as these two things are relatively prime, which they're assumed to be. Therefore, I know that there does in fact exist a solution x to this congruence. Now if I think about what is my equation here, I hope that you see that what's playing the role of x is this t. And so I can find such a t again because 
It all relies on that M is uh, relatively prime to N here. So there exists a solution to this equation. Now let's move on to why is the solution unique? And so how's a typical uniqueness proof go? Well, let's suppose I had two solutions. I had an X and I had a Y. So I have two integers, X and Y. So let's consider their difference. So let's call that Z. So Z is the difference here. And uh, if I was to um, look at both of these equations then, if I plug in Z is equal to X minus Y, well, if X and Y are both solutions to this system, well, then X is congruent to A and Y is congruent to A. Well, so in that case then, this would be A minus A, which is zero. So Z is congruent to A, uh, sorry, Z is congruent to zero mod N. And uh, similarly, um, if X and Y is also solution, are both solutions to this uh, congruence right here, well then X and Y individually are congruent to B. Um, therefore, when I plug in Z, Z would be congruent to zero mod N. So what does that say? If Z is congruent to zero mod M, and z is congruent to zero mod n, well that says that both m and n divide z. But wait a minute, m and n are relatively prime, and that's what we're saying here, so that uh, in particular, if they're relatively prime, if each of those numbers individually divide z, then their product divides z as well. And in that case, if n, m divides z, all we're gonna do is translate that divisibility statement back into this kind of modular arithmetic statement. That means that x has to be equivalent to y mod nm. And maybe if you're wondering how did you make that jump right there, there is a slight intermediate kind of step here. Um, we're saying that z is equivalent to zero mod nm, right? If nm evenly divides it, the remainder is zero. Now plug in your definition of z, which of course is x minus y. And now if you add that y over, that is how you obtain the end of the proof, that x is congruent to y mod nm. Let's do an example to try to illustrate, one, um, how you solve a system, and two, what's this uniqueness modulo some product of m and n here? And so let us do an example. So let's look at, and maybe I'll just do it up here. By the way, too, um, you see that there is an algorithm for how to do the Chinese remainder theorem. It's 2.23. But you also notice that it uses what's called the extended GCD, which is 2.37. We're still in 2.2 right now, so I'm gonna wait, and I'm not gonna tell you about the Chinese remainder theorem via this algorithm. I'm gonna tell you more about this idea here that this is the X that should work. So let me give you an example with some specific numbers. And these specific numbers that I play with is I'm going to solve x is congruent to 3 mod 4. And I'm going to solve x is congruent to 2 uh, mod 9. And so this is my system. And I'm going to apply the Chinese remainder theorem um, in order to solve it. And so what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to start here. And uh, in terms of uh, my system of equations, to me, it looks like my a is three, and my m is four, and my n is nine, and I guess I skipped over b, didn't I? My b is two. So it looks like I wanna have three plus t times four. I want that to be congruent to two mod nine. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move some stuff around. So uh, you see that that says that one plus four t if I subtract that two, that's how I got the one. That's congruent to uh, zero mod nine. And of course, if you're congruent to zero mod nine, that says nine divides the left-hand side. So I want T uh, such that nine divides one plus four T. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eyeball a T. Well, T equals two works. That would be one plus eight, which is nine, and nine divides that. So I found a T. Cool, and that's all we wanted to do. Like, and if you look through that, I wanna just know, is there a T that'll make that true? So let's say, let's take T equal to two. So then that we'll do is we'll set, then what we'll do is we'll set X equal to, and again, what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to set X equal to A plus your T that you just found times M. So in my case, uh, A is three. So I'm gonna say X is equal to three uh, plus, two times and m in my example is four. So I get that x is equal to 11. 
So what's the point? What happens then? I want to look at um, what is, I guess do, if I plug in 11 now, x equal 11, is it true that 11 is congruent to 3 mod 4? And is it true that 11 is congruent to 2 mod 9? And if you think about both of those, yeah, it is true. So 11 is a perfectly good answer. Now, if I um, back up a little bit here, I mean, what's another acceptable answer for t? You know, I just eyeballed this t equals 2 here. If I go back, so maybe remember that x equal 11 was an answer. Now, if I go back, though, and I think about well, what's another answer for t? Um, let's see. If I take t, t itself equal to 11. If t is 11, this is 44, and this is 45, and 9 divides that. So what if I took t equal to 11? So then what would x be? And remember, x is supposed to be eventually the solution to the system I'm after, which in my case, I should probably highlight this system that I'm actually computing. And so uh, x is equal to, uh, in my case, 3 plus 11 times 4 now, which would be um, how much? 47. And now what I want to just think about is if I plug in x equals 47, is 47 congruent to 3 mod 4? In other words, when you divide by 3, is the remainder, uh, sorry, when you divide 47 by 4, is the remainder 3? And the answer to that is yep. And similarly, when you divide 47 by 9, is the remainder 2? And the answer to that is yeah. So 47 is also a solution to this. So, so far I've tried to demonstrate to you that like, you know, there's more than one x that works, right? x equal 11 worked, x equals 47 works, and there's a pattern to it. Now, what is this part trying to say? Well, the solution x that you get is unique modulo m times n. In my example, m times n is 36. So modulo m times n, 11, is the unique solution. And if you think about it, the 47 that I got, what happens when you reduce that modulo 36? You get 11. So that is when we can say that there's a unique solution to the system, modulo m times n. If I scroll down, let's look at, so the problem that's posted in the section, right, is a system of three equations. Um, and so let's talk about what's the, uh, how do you solve such a thing there? But it's based on the same idea of this system of two equations. So sorry, I keep scrolling quite a bit here. So what we'll do is we'll focus, or we'll focus on uh, the first two equations here. And I'm also going to maybe give you a different way to think about how to set up the Chinese remainder theorem here. And what we're going to do is we are going to really do the same thing. But, you know, uh, I keep scrolling on you. And again, I'm sorry. Um, when I started out with uh, A plus T times M is congruent to B mod N, I could rearrange stuff at this point if I wanted to. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write that a little bit differently. I'm gonna get the TM part by itself. So TM is congruent to B minus A modulo five. And uh, in that case then, let's plug in what I know. I know that M is supposed to be three. And uh, so where's three? There it is, M is three. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a T that makes sure that three times T is congruent to one mod five. So in other words, like what's the multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 5? And you'd say, well, 2, right? Because this would be 6, which is congruent to 1 mod 5. So t equals 2 is a fantastic answer. So when you have t equals 2, remember that then we're going to set x, in that case, would be equal to uh, a plus um, tm, uh, which would look like, and maybe I'm doing more work than I need to, a plus tm, which would be 2 plus the 2 that I just found, which is t, times 3, which is 8. So, so far, x equals 8 would be a solution to this system right here. Now, what we also just saw is that any number that's congruent to 8 mod 15 would also be a solution. So, like, for example, 23 would also be a perfectly good solution to both of these congruences. And uh, if I add 15 more to that, how many is that? 38? 38 would also be a perfectly good uh, value for x that solves both of these here. So what does that allow me to do? Well, since any such number mod 15 that's congruent to 8 also solves these two here, what I can do then is I can just take x is congruent to the t I found mod m times n and consider that with this equation here. 
So what I've done is to do the Chinese remainder theorem with maybe more than two equations, we're just gonna kind of break it down into uh, a bunch of different two by twos. And so the solution to this set of two, uh, sorry, these two equations here is uh, gonna be the answer to the system of three equations. And we'll try to do the same thing. And again, maybe something to notice, the only reason we can do the Chinese remainder theorem again is because 15 and seven are relatively prime. Maybe I should have highlighted that a little bit earlier too, even with these, these moduli three and five are relatively prime. And so if I repeat the same process here, um, what do I wanna do? I want to look at, again, T times 15. So that's coming from, that's my M, T times M. I want that to be congruent to B minus A, which is right here, modulo N, so mod seven. And uh, what does that say then? That says 15 T is congruent to, um, how many is that? Negative six mod seven. And uh, what's a good answer for that? Well, T equal to one. So in other words, 15 is already congruent to negative six mod seven. And so in that case, I can build my solution X to the system, which would be A plus TM. So I should plug in, well, A was eight. That's my A right there. So eight uh, plus one times M, well, M is 15. And so I get 23. So X is 23 in this case. So X equals 23 solves these two. And now to go back, what have I got? Well, 23 solves this one. 23 solves this, and what I was trying to say a moment ago is that, well, if 23 solves this one, then 23 solves these as well, because 23 is congruent to eight modulo 15. So therefore, uh, x equals 23 is a good answer. And you know, note that there are other solutions here. In fact, uh, any x that's congruent to 23 modulo three times five times seven is also a good answer. But 23 is the unique answer um, modulo three times five times seven. So if I only take those numbers that are less than or equal to three times five times seven, then 23 uh, is, that, is that unique answer. Maybe I should be more careful. <laughs> Between one and three times five times seven. Now Sage can do uh, solve um, systems of linear congruences pretty quickly. It's got this built-in command CRT, and you see that there are four inputs. You need to tell it A, you need to tell it B, M, and N. And where those letters come from, right, is again via the statement of the theorem. So use the statement of the theorem to guide you with how to input things into Sage. And again, when you use CRT like that, that's just a system of two equations. That's X congruent to A mod M, and simultaneously X congruent to B mod N. And so like uh, in our case here, maybe the first two equations that I solved up here, I could get that solution pretty quickly, it's eight. So Sage can, can do this work that we did by hand, um, again, up here. How do you do a system of three equations? Like what if I wanted to answer kind of the motivating problem in the beginning of the section for the Chinese remainder theorem? You use this command CRT list. And CRT list, um, in our case here, what are we gonna do? We're gonna put our numbers like A, B, and C, and notice that uh, in that we're, we're, we're putting the first input kind of as a list, and that's what the brackets on the end do. So this is like my, my A, my B, and my C, since I've got three equations. And then over here, I've got my list of the moduli, three, five, and seven. And so uh, if it's possible, I want you to <laughs> look at that. Remember the two, the three, and the two is like A, B, and C, and the three, the five, and the seven are like uh, the moduli, M, N, and I probably need another letter, but uh, it is, this would be the first input as a list, and these would be the second input as a list. And of course, what we said up below is that when you solve that, you ought to get 23. And so Sage should spit out, you know, the unique answer, the unique answer uh, modulo the product of these moduli.